as an old earth saying, Captain. A phrase of great power and wisdom, and consolation to the soul in times of need. What's that then? An Aussie! Welcome to About Time, a Doctor Who podcast. I'm Stephen, and I've been a Doctor Who fan since 2005. And I'm Ben, and I've never seen the show before. Now we're watching and discussing every episode of the revived series. And quite frankly, it's It's about about time. time. Hello. Hello. Excuse me while I just wipe away my tears. Aww. I didn't cry. No, you didn't, because you're a stone-cold bitch. Yeah. Plus, you don't have the nostalgia factor, which I understand. But yes. Hi, listeners. We've just watched The End of Time, Part 2, a.k.a. The End of My Childhood. No. Ben's playing with um, our little Funko Pop of David Tennant. Not playing. He sat next to me because Stephen said he needed to watch his final episode. He does. So it's the last chance he's going to get until later. <laughs> But this, I can't believe, I can't believe we've made it here. So this is episode 81 of our regular episodes mm. on this podcast. Did, when we started, did you ever think we would do 81 episodes? No. And there's even more if you count the bonuses. Yeah. And we've, yeah, this is a huge milestone. 81 episodes. Not that, but just that David Tennant's final episode. Yeah. As the Doctor, as the regular Doctor. Um, do we have anything to uh, update people on before we start? Um, how have you been? Yeah, I'm okay. Tired as always. Mm. You've properly started your job now. Yeah. And it's uh, very full on. Mm hmm. Quite, quite draining, isn't it? Yes. But you're doing well. I hope so. You are. You are. Have faith. And we're going to give you a little break now, aren't we, before we go on to the next era? Yeah. Probably not for listeners. Probably it will come, it might be a week or two off, but we'll see. We will let you know. So, the episode starts on war-torn Gallifrey. So we see the Citadel dome all shattered and Dalek spaceships all crashed on the ground. Did you see How do you know they're Dalek spaceships? Because that's what they look like. They're flat. They're round and flat like discs. That's what they look like, the Dalek ships. Oh, reminds me of the Malurk and Falcon. Oh, don't you remember from Parting of the Ways? Uh, no. no, you wouldn't remember. But they're all, they're all little like frisbees. I need to use my working memory and my long-term memory for other things. Fair enough. Doctor Who trivia is not one of them. No, but you do get so many references now that you would never have got before. Yeah. Oh, I we're love. watching One Foot in a Grave at the moment because we, we we watch a sitcom of tea. Yeah. And that, Stephen, would watch, watching, Stephen probably would want to watch something a bit more gritty. But I know I need to watch a sitcom of tea. You after a long light. day. Yeah. After a long day, I need something like light, lighthearted and not so long. So my attention's not weans because it does wean yeah but yeah they had two doctor who references within two back episodes. to back yeah <laughs> victor got a um pint glass super glued to his forehead and he had to lie down and uh, she was like you have to stay there and he was like what am i supposed to do lie here like a bedridden dalek and then in the next episode they were talking about their friend who was scared of everything on the news and she was listing all these things and then she goes um man eating fungus that comes up through the drains she goes she says she saw it on the news but i reckon it was doctor who what accent does Annette Crobby have? They're both slightly Scottish. Is she Scottish? Yeah, it's a, it's a kind of dulled down Scottish, but they're both Scottish. I like to think Victor and Margaret met in Scotland and then moved down. No. Oh. Do you remember Richard Wilson being in Doctor Who? No. He was the Doctor Constantine in the gas oh, mask episode. yeah. He turned into a gas mask. And Annette Crosby's going to be in the next episode. How do you know that? In the next episode that we watch. How do you know that? Because I've seen it. But how do you know that episode? Because I know that that's the episode she's in. Oh. It's only a small cameo. Does she play um, somebody's gran? Basically, yeah. The next companion's gran? No. Oh. Next companion's friend's gran. Oh. Yeah. I love Wilf. I know. He he shone in this two-parter. Yeah. He really Wait, Do you remember shone. when he first appeared? You, I was desperate for you to like him and you were like, oh, he's a bit meh, he's a bit pointless. And now you're like... You actually like him a lot. Yeah. And um, just those like scenes, like he was like, I'm older than you. Yeah, I love I'm those. I'm 906. They have great chemistry. Yeah. Did Bernard Cribbon die before he could be in the, the new episodes? He has a very small cameo. Yeah. Oh. 
But yes, yeah, so we, we have a scene with the Council of the Time Lords where they're sitting in that black room. Yeah. What a knob. What, the president? What a knob. Someone disagrees and he kills them. Yes, that's called... Dictatorship. Dictatorship, yeah. And then you have... Oh, my God. Okay, we have... Okay, if my brain's going to be bitter all over the place. Okay. I'm so sorry. Okay. It's going to be one of those episodes. I'm so sorry, babes. Um, we do not find out... Who the woman is. Who the woman is. Who do you think she is? His mother. The doctor's mother. Yes. Okay. Russell T Davies would agree with you. He has said that he intended her to be the doctor's mother but um he decided not to make it explicit in the episode and that it leave it up to people's imaginations what a load of shit because do you remember when they did the time lords voted yeah. and only two stood against one of them was that with a woman and the other one was a man so i'm guessing the other one was the doctor's father but how was she teleporting her consciousness outside of the time war? i have no idea it's a bit weird isn't it what a load of shit. It could be the Doctor's mother. It could be Susan. No, it's not fucking Susan. It could be. No, Susan is like the Doctor. She is out there in on Earth. She's had her babies. Maybe she has her babies. Yeah, but we don't know. I mean, I, don't, I haven't listened to any audios that she might be in, but... Did she come back in the specials? No. But I, um, I don't know if she got involved with the Time War or what, but... No... She's got the doctor's DNA in her, so she would be a bit passive, see. Well, your DNA doesn't make you change who your beliefs are, does it? You don't know anything about Gallifrey and DNA. Oh, fair enough. What did you think of the visionary? Talk about shoehorn. What? Literally, they are scientific people, and then they're like, oh, we've got a medium. <laughs> you wouldn't believe in it, babes. You don't know that. No, I'm sorry, Stephen, no. They are scientifics. How do you know? They are scientifics. How do you know that? Because I do know. Have you seen them? Yes. When? I saw them last night. And they told you, did yes. they? Yes. Oh. They said, Benny booby boobs. We are scientific people. But there has been examples of prophecy and psychicness and stuff in Doctor Who. So it obviously can happen. Not in her terms. So, like, okay, I believe, I think that the Ood are their tentacles, their their receptacle things, their... Mm. The spaghetti. I believe that they're so sensitive that they've got tiny little hairs on them and that they can feel the vibrations of someone's life. Okay. Well, maybe the visionary's got tiny little hairs that can No, feel the she vibration. doesn't have tiny little hairs. <laughs> She's just a crackpot. Okay. I would only believe it if she saw it written in the stars. Yeah, maybe that's what it is. I don't know. And one of the Time Lords also mentioned they think this is the final day of the Time War. The Doctor possesses the moment and will use it to destroy Time Lords and Daleks alike. The moment. What is the moment, do you think? Inside the inside the TARDIS. Is it? Do you think? Yeah. Mm -hmm. TARDIS is uncommon on Gallifrey. Do you think? Yeah. TARDIS is like the Doctor's. The dot, how the dot, probably the TARDIS for the Doctor, he stole the moment, put it in the TARDIS, and that's what stopped it transforming. But what is the moment? The moment is magical power. Not magical power, like essence of time, moment. It creates moments, mm. gaps in history. I mean, it obviously sounds like a weapon if he will use it to destroy. No, it is the TARDIS. It is the TARDIS. Mm. Fair enough. Um... I have a question, and I think I know the answer, and I'm not sure I want to think about it. Yeah. But you know how all humans turned into the master? Yeah. Does that mean, like, little babies in their prams turned into the master? And, like, newborn babies? Yes. What about pregnant women with, with a baby in their uterus? He would be pregnant with... Pregnant with himself? With himself. <laughs> but did they turn into baby masters, or did they turn into full-grown adult masters? I think they turned into adult masters. No, they, 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 their body stayed the same, remember that. The body stays the same, it's just the head. No, no, they're all... Because, remember, the doctor said that guard is one inch too tall, which was the giveaway. So they all literally became the physically the same as the master. Oh. His whole body. So if there was a little baby in a pram, in like a little baby grow, he would go like... And like burst out of it and turn into a naked master. Naked John Sim. Well, he owes them a new pram. <laughs> Breaking. Those things are expensive. No wonder people save them if they can have more babies. Yeah. 
You know, Wilf asked the doctor, did he change the dead bodies in their graves? Mm. I don't think he did. Because they're, they're not dead. alive. Yeah. Because then where do you draw the line if they're decomposing? Like, if it's just a pile of mulch. Yeah. No, like, I, I, I think, like, if they're dead, they're dead, there's nothing to change. Yeah. So I'm predicting you didn't like this bit, which was um, Donna's head boom and fainting. I really wanted her to have more to do with this. Yeah, it would have been nice. And then he was like, you don't think I'd leave my best friend without a defence mechanism, would you? Mm. It's a bit of a cop out, isn't it? That just, you know, she starts to remember. And so, you know, how many times can she do that? If she woke up and something else was attacking her, would she do it again? I think it depends. Yeah. But I guess they wanted to have Wilf be with the Doctor. And so if you're going to have Wilf, it'd be a bit cheap to not have Donna in it and just be like, oh, she's on holiday in Spain or something. But then if you also have to respect the fact that she can't remember the Doctor. Yeah. So, yeah. Can't or won't? Well, she will die if she does. Who said? The Doctor. Well, she remembers him late in life. You don't know anything about that. They're on the same poster. Well, the, OK, imagine you're the writer and you are told you're going to write a story with David Tennant and Catherine Tate, Doctor Who. Mm. But she can't remember the Doctor. How are you going to do that? Um, what I would do is I would the Doctor would have to, like, absorb her. Well, all that, like, residue of the Doctor... He would absorb it and then he would hold her head and he would impart all the adventures that they had together. And then they'd be back to where they were. Oh. So the Vimbocci rescue the Doctor and Wolf. Oh, she was hilarious. She was, yeah. He was a bit of a wet blanket, but he was. she was hilarious. I think they were both funny and both good. Yeah. Like, I swear to God that she might have been the actress that was in Down to Earth. Okay. I know she was in Being Human, which you didn't like. She was um, Russell Tovey's girlfriend, I think. Oh, I know we get we get known as the thirsty podcast. Yes, who are we I would not over? be. I would not mind being in that sandwich. Oh, between Jack and Alonzo. Yeah, yeah, we'll come to that. We'll come to that. Um, yeah, I think they are very funny. Um, but do you know what really annoys me? Because a lot of their scenes in the ship are very dark. Mm. So you know their faces; mm-hmm. they're obviously green. But when they filmed it, they just gave them. It sort of blended, so they had pink faces and then it blended to the green round their heads. Yeah, I, I noticed the CGI. Yeah. And then they, I think they obviously, I don't know if that was always the intention or if they made the decision, let's make them fully green. So then. Well, the man had rubbings here. Yeah. You could see his skin coming through. In post production, they sort of fully greenified their faces. But because of where it's dark, it was kind of hard for them to do it, I think. So you see patches of pink and it just yeah. irritates me. But yeah. Got Vin Vocci and Vocci. Zocci. Zocchi was the red one. The bionic boy. Yeah, and Vimbocci was the green ones. The cactuses. That's cacti. That's racist. Is it Mabe? Mabe? Hey, Mabe. I wonder what their names were. Well, their human aliases were Adams and... I can't remember, something else. Sinatra. But we never know what their actual names are. Uh, I'm going to give them names. I'm going to give them Spiky 1 and Spiky 2. Yeah. I love how the Doctor couldn't even be bothered to find out their names. He just went, you, what's your name? I need you. Yeah, how rude. (laughs) And then he gets on their ship and he's just like, oh, I'm just going to break your ship for a moment. Yeah. And then he fixes it. And then then he's like, like, I can't fix it. But after he talks to Wilf and he realises and the man echoes into his head, it's like, oh... Actually, I yeah. can fix it. I think almost he was just stalling for time. He could have fixed it any time he wanted. Yeah. But he was trying to work out what to do. So the Time Lords throw this diamond down to Earth. The White Point the Star. The White Point Star, yeah. Such a good idea. Is it? Yeah. Do you think? Yeah. But how does a diamond get through the time lock if nothing can get in or out? Oh, it's because the signal. It's Yeah, yeah the yeah. signal has opened up a small yeah. crack into the time, in, from, in the time bubble. Yeah, yeah. And he threw it through. Yeah. But also, they're watching this, like, projection of planet Earth. Mm. And he throws the diamond into the projection. And that magically makes it go to actual Earth. That's where the portal was. It was a portal. Yeah, just Or, like, the yeah. rip in time. Okay. Don't get me wrong. This two-parter is some of Russell's weakest, weakest episodes. Right, yes. I hate to admit it, but you're absolutely right. And lots of people say that. And I've... I think, do do one or the other. Do this... Master versus the Doctor, or do the Gallifrey and the people coming back? Mm. I just don't think... I think you need you to focus on one strand. Maybe, yeah. 
I thought you were going to say do one thing or the other, have like a massive epic thing or have a small character piece kind of thing. And they kind of tried to do both. Mm. Um, but I, I don't mind that. I think that's cool. No. I think there's a lot. It's like a lot thrown in, isn't it? Like a lot. Like it's an over egg pudding, mm. this story. Yeah. But. I just I just think that the Doctor, it, you need, I think there's an episode where the Doctor and the Master have to work together in order uh, for a common goal would have been cool. Yeah. Yeah, it would be. But like, the Master's mm. dead. But there's no, there's no, 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 no white haired matron coming up to pick the ring up and brew a potion to bring him oh, back. Oh, for the master. He goes off into the, um, he's fighting the Time Lords as they go back into the Time War. Mm. So he ends up getting locked in the bubble. He gets back into the Time Law, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. So the master can never come back. Uh, <laughs> absolutely he can. That's the master's thing. I'm sorry to tell you this all, but Stephen Moffat, of course he's going to bring him back. He's a villain of the villainest ages. I don't know. The master does have a habit of managing to escape from certain death. Because he's a genius. Yeah. He, if anybody can get out of that time lock. Yeah. He can. Yeah. Would um, it be hilarious if the, if the master actually um, invented the Daleks and he is actually Daphros from the future. Daphros is him from the future. Why would that be hilarious? Well, not hilarious. It'd be a good story. Would it? Yeah. If we watched an episode where that happened, you'd be like, what a bunch of shit. Well, if it was done good and they took my ideas on board, maybe <laughs> I'd enjoy it. But no, this is how I would do it. So the t- the doctor and the master are children and then they get become young adults. When they become young adults, they realise that they love each other. Yeah. They love each other very deeply and they begin a relationship. Then the Gallifreyans, they don't care about... Who's the bottom? Sexuality. Who's the top? What? Who's the bottom? They're both the sides. Let's oh. get out of that question. Um, <laughs> and they they start a relationship on Gallifrey, and Gallifrey's like, we don't care about um, your relationship. We don't care about gay or straight and bi or whatever. We just love people as people, and um, we want you to be happy, but we want you to use your special mind to help us. Oh, my God, the president, not as smart, are you, babes? That whole council couldn't match probably the intellect in... The nail of the Doctor. Mm. I do think the Master is smarter than Doctor, though. Do you think? Yeah. Very different way. He is smarter because he doesn't think of the ramifications of other people. He thinks of himself. So that gets him further and quicker. The Doctor thinks of everyone. Yeah. But that's not to do with smartness, though, is it? No, it is. Yeah, no, it is. So what you're saying is the Doctor's compassion holds him back in some ways. Whereas... Because the master master's have ruthless. That problem, yeah. Yeah, he's just like, okay, I don't care if eight billion people have become me. That's great. And then you've got Donnie Babes, who doesn't become him. Yeah, because she's a slightly different brain. Weird. And then she shoots out, like, remnants of the TARDIS. Yeah. Oh, my God. What a cop-out. Okay. This is what I don't mind. This is what I don't get with, like... Russell's writing sometimes it's up it just feels like you can do it once and then you just then you change your mind the next time so Rose oh you've said this before Rose has her mind completely <laughs> obliterated by the golden light of the TARDIS mm. she managed to make someone immortal mm. yet she can still remember the doctor and be yeah. in love with him blah 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 but Donna can't even remember all the good that she did yeah that is a crock of shit yeah I can understand what you mean but I suppose it's slightly different because Donna had an actual biological, like she she changed into a part Time Lord. Um, she's got two hearts. I don't know how much Time Lord and how much human, but she was no longer fully human. Whereas Rose was fully human the whole time. She just had the power of the Time Vortex flowing through her, which the yeah, doctor which removed. obliterated her mind, which the doctor removed, and then it caused him to die. And he glowed. Yeah. Anyway. Um, Do you find Peter Capaldi attractive? Um, I mean, he when he was younger, he was very handsome. Not being ageist, but I was going to say you mentioned earlier those lovely scenes with Wolf, um, yeah. where Wolf says, "Oh, you know, you're nine hundred years old. We must look like insects to you." Yeah. He's like, "I think you look like giants." That was nice. We don't look like giants. We, I think the the Doctor hugely respects the human race. Why? 
the crock of shit sometimes. It can be a crock of shit we sometimes. Are, and believe me, the doctor knows awful that as well. We are awful people sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Like, don't get me wrong, we all... The, but that the, doesn't the, erase the goodness. The majority of us try our best every day. But then the people, people who have power start to abuse that power. And then suddenly you have a lot of hate in the world. Mm. No, I, I agree. Humans can be awful, but they yeah. can also be amazing. Yeah. And people like Wilf, that's what the doctor means. Like, I love the bit when he says, I'd be proud if you were my dad. Um, I'm sorry, the doctor, but he's not your dad because he's human. That's No, he said if. Although when I watched this the first time, I did wonder, are they, are they going to make it that Wilf is actually the doctor's dad? Like, and he's like chameleon arched into a human or something. I think what would have been fantastic yeah. is that Wilf actually Wilf is Susan's son. Oh. So the reason why he's can have he has the longing for the stars yeah. is because he's part time lord. Yeah, and that would mean Donna is a descendant of the Doctor. Which means that she could have the Time Lord Time Lord in yeah. her brain. Which means that the Doctor's worry is for nothing. Yeah. And maybe that's why when he was coming towards her to wipe her memory, she was going, no, no, please, no, please. Because she knew she didn't have to have it removed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is that what happens? No. Oh. You missed the trick. Bit complicated. A bit law heavy. What? If you bring in old Susan's son and... No, it's what? not law. Stephen, you're talking to a show that invents, like, the bulging star brigade... The <laughs> What's that? Looney Tune bin of the star clusters. What are you talking about? Like it has all these inventor and any places. Yeah. The Sontarian fleet of people. Yeah, I just mean like if you start referencing Susan and yes, stuff. Yes, you can. Yeah. It's called Backstory Babes. Okay. Maybe you need to put more bit of that in your story. I suppose it's how you how you do it, isn't it? To make it Stephen, accessible. I don't understand you sometimes. You can read sometimes a 700 page book, which has is always referring to backstory. Yeah. I'm saying it, it's fine for fans, but they try to make the show appealing to people who aren't super into it. But the thing is, though, by referencing the past, maybe you'll get people into the old Doctor Who. Yeah. Maybe it will be the spark of Susan's adventures. Yeah. And like Susan's like she finds like a time bracelet. And she can jump through time. And then she has... Yeah, you mean like a vortex manipulator like Jack's got? Yeah. Yeah. And maybe Jack meets Susan. Yeah. But the doctor would have something to say about that. Oh. Don't. Just don't. Jack is, I think, going to bang Alonzi, whatever his Alonzo, name is. Alonzo, yeah. Alonzo. All those times that Wilf tried to give him the gun and he kept refusing, saying, no, I would never... I would never. And then as soon as he realised the Time Lords were coming back, he changed his tune. Because he knows how merciless they exactly. are. Exactly. And I just think that's so effective. There's so many times that Wilf keeps trying to say to him, look, please protect yourself, take this gun. And he keeps refusing it. Oh. It just goes, goes to show how serious it is. And he was the one then who eventually created the Doctor's demise. I know. I know. And the Doctor was like, that scene, that scene was powerful because like, and the way the, way the Doctor was like, I don't want to go. And he was like, and I was like, that's basically David Tennant saying. Yeah, I know. I and Russell. Go. Russell writing it in the script as well. I'm sorry, but they didn't have to go. No, but it's one of those things. It's bittersweet. Like you, you kind of make the, the choice for practical reasons um, because you can't do it forever. You can't do everything forever. Uh, but there's still. Nolly did Crossroads for yeah. ages. Yeah, but Russell had other things he wanted to do. And also the job was killing him. Like, it, was it? It's a very demanding job. And yeah, I know he's come back to it now. He's come back to it as an older man. Yes, I know. But he's had a long break. Um, yeah, no, I do think it's it's very meta. It's both the doctor, it's both David Tennant and Russell also saying, I don't want to go, but you have to. But anyway. Do you think David Tennant is Russell T. Davies' favourite doctor he's ever created? Well, I would think so, yes, because he brought him back for the 60th and it's just, yeah. Do you think the doctor, do you think Russell watched... Stephen Moffat. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely. He's watched it all the way through. Do you think he wrote episodes? No. Fat well, on. Stephen Moffat wrote for... He could have done, but he didn't. He wanted to cut ties at that point with Doctor Who. Not cut ties, but just be like... Oh, so he could write Cucumber. Yeah, and stuff like that. And he just wanted to step back, I think. And 
What was he writing at the moment? At the moment? Well, he's working on Doctor Who, isn't he? Oh. How do I get onto the Doctor Who writing team? How do I get on? I don't even want to write an episode. I don't know how to write an episode. I just want to feed back some ideas. Yeah, well, have you got any idea how many people want to do that? Yes, I know. And he's not going to listen. But how how do these people get to write Doctor Who episode? Well, they go through the process of, you know, start. you probably start out um, as like a script assistant or a script editor or something. And you've got to kind of gradually work your way up. Why don't you do that? I would like to, to be honest. But um, it's one of those things. Change is very scary and starting something new. And I don't know how to get into it. You're getting 30. I am 30 too. Yeah. Yeah. And then you probably have to go into London and all that. Yeah, that's hate fine. London. I hate London. So do I. Anyway. The thing is, this is what I'm going to say to you, Stephen. If that's what you want to do... If you've got something you want to do, you need to do it. Yeah. Before time's too late. I know. I know. You don't want to sit on your deathbed and be like, oh, I wish I did this. I know. You don't get another go at life. No, you don't. That's a cheery note, isn't it? Yeah. Um, Did you like um, Wilf being on the laser? Very Star Wars. Yeah. I think Russell said that. He said he wanted to make him, give him like a Luke Skywalker moment. I say that as if I know what I'm talking about. I've never watched it. He's um, like, woohoo! They, yeah, I would. I saw that on Confidential. They they didn't give him much direction. They just let him go off and improvise. And um, he did so much. And they only put a tiny bit of it in where he was like, I wish Donna could see me now. Hmm. But on Confidential, you can see him and he's going, whoa, whoa, hey. oh, oh, yeah, Winston, glad to see this one in. Oh, yeah. And making up all this. Bless him. He was having a whale of a time. Having... It's crazy, though. I mean, yeah, sure. Wilf has, like, army experience, but... To translate that into some big space laser that you roll around in. Oh, no. He... The Doctor just put him there. Yeah. Because he just thinks, like, well, it's better than no one. Mm. But the fact that they managed to then to shoot all the missiles so that none of them impacted. Well, did you listen to the man? It automatically locks. You've just got a fire. Oh, fine. Okay, yeah. (sighs) And he was making some funny noises, wasn't there? A bit where he was going, like... Or something. Yeah, he was speaking Volcano. Vochiness. Vinvochian. Vinvochian. Vin, 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 yeah. He goes like this. This is how you speak Vinvochi. I'll tell you. Very good. I like that. I'll be making a TikTok out of that. Um, <laughs> Why? Because it's funny. Oh. I wish people could see your face while you were doing it. I bet you don't know what it means, though, because you can't speak Vinvochi. No, what does it mean? It means. I'm sad. Because? The Doctor's dead. Well, the 10th Doctor's dead. Yeah. Well, no more eye candy. That's why I'm more yeah. sad. Did we talk about last episode that he said about it feels like dying? He said even though he goes on like this body dies and some new man goes sauntering off. Yeah, but he thought he was actually going to die, die. Well, it was. it could have been one or the other. But he said even if he changes, it still feels like It was dying. only when the Ood said this song ends, but the story... The song is about to end and the story never ends. No, he knew he was changing from the moment he got out of the box. And, you know, when he started healing himself on his face. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He was so angry at Wilf, wasn't he? He was like, yeah. you always do this, Wilf! You had to go and get stuck. So a lot of people, if we're going to talk about that scene, um, a lot of people find that quite uncomfortable um, because they don't like the fact that the doctor's like blaming Wilf and having to go at Wilf. I'm sorry, what would you do if you were about to die? Yeah, I understand. Like, it, I think. like, literally, would you leave Wilf in there or would you not? No, of course. He, there was never a question. He was always going to save Wilf. The thing is, though, this character's coming to understand about their morality. Mortality. And this and this incarnation of him yeah. is not going to survive yeah. for the rest of his life. Yeah. What's I think the average was... lifespan of a Time Lord? I've got no the idea. Question. Um, I think it was just, it was particularly bitter for him because he, he went through all that whole epic thing and he was like, I'm still alive. I'm still alive. Like he thought he'd made it. Yeah. And then you just hear this little tap, 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 tap on the glass. And that is such a good twist. You even gasped. Yeah. Cause then I was like, I was, I was very much like all the way through the episode. I was like, okay, Stephen's pulled my leg here. There's a, there's another, there's another episode or there's oh, another you think series yeah. or something like that. Because yeah. like. He was surviving everything. He yeah, was yeah. taking it with the punches and he was like falling from the sky in through a sky ceiling. Yeah. And still survived. Yeah. But then it was like, yeah, it was. I do love that. And I personally, I think the Doctor's regeneration should always be like that. I think he should be sacrificing himself for 
the greater he loves. good or something. Because he does yeah. love Lilf. But rather than just, oh, whoops, a giant laser just smacked him yeah. in the face. No spoilers. Um, not saying that happens, but... Um, it does happen. Well, you don't know which doctor. You're so rude, Stephen. You don't know which doctor. I do. You can guess, probably. I do. Matt which doctor was written by the writer that people don't like? Chob? Yeah. Um, Chobby! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it should always be... You know, it could be big. It doesn't have to be small scale like this, like just for one man. Mm. But I think something, some selfless act. Mm. Like in the classic series, one of his one, one of his regenerations, I think, was him and his companion were both poisoned and there was only enough antidote for one person. So he, get, he allowed the companion to have it so he could change mm. and things like that. Yeah. But like the thing is, though, how do you think Choppy feels that his, his era of Doctor Who sparked a reboot? Mm. I don't want to be too harsh on the Chibnall era because there are lots of people who love it. Um, and I don't hate it as vehemently as a lot of people do. Who is in... Who's, who is in it? Chibnall era. Yeah, who's the Whittaker. doctor? Is that him? Just uh, him? Just, just her, yes. She's a woman. Just her, sorry. Um, <laughs> Bradley Walsh is in it as a companion. He was a clown! I know. In... Sarah Jane. Was, yeah, oh my God, Sarah Jane. I'm sorry, Pete, but I'm not watching any more of that. No, that's fine. But that that ship has sailed. Yeah. When are we going to talk about the farewell tour? We will. Um, I just want to mention um, probably my least favourite thing in this. I find it so cringy is when Gallifrey starts fading into existence and it's like edging towards the earth. Yeah. I hate it. I just find it so like, ugh. Like, surely it would have more of an effect on the planet, having another planet so close to it. Oh, my God, yeah. Rather it would, than just... It would, it, the gravitational pull would... would Yeah, it, it, that, that they did not think about that scientifically. No, it's so cringy to me. Yeah. And it's just, it just appears in the sky, like, and everyone's going, ah, I'm running around the street. The thing is, the only, the only thing I can think of is that it's not fully materialised. Yeah, there, that is true, maybe. Yeah. Um. It appeared and you went, what an ugly planet. It is a fucking ugly planet. <laughs> I'm sorry, the Earth is gorge compared to that. Yeah. And yet we still ruin it. Yeah. Stop killing the Earth. The Earth needs you to look after it. Yeah. Um. And so the Time Lord's plan is to basically destroy time itself. And they are going to ascend to become beings of consciousness alone. How? I have no idea. That is what we call insanity. Mm. To be fair, though, what he says about consciousness alone, free of these bodies, free of time and cause and effect. That sounds quite good as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> I hate existing in a physical world. If I could just be consciousness, I'd love that. <laughs> nah. I, the phys- I was not built for this physical world. I think that's an autistic thing. It just sounded quite tempting. Um, the master was like, take me with you. And then he got called diseased because... But you diseased him! I know. They went back in time to do it. Yeah. That bit I don't understand. The man came in, we he said we put the drum in it. Yeah, I don't know. Well, they used the untempered schism somehow. Um, what is a schism? A schism is a like a divide in something. Normally it means when there's like a... Like people divide into factions. And like this. Moses created a schism. No, I was thinking like in a group of people when yeah. they've got like a, say there's like a political party mm. and then you, they divide into two factions and it's like one thinks this and the other thinks this. That's a, There's a, a schism. Oh, like Nigel Farage's party and the Tories. I guess so, yeah. Something like that. Oh my God, Maria. She was like, Maria? Please, Doctor. You mean Sylvia? Oh. Maria wasn't in this. Oh. She'd have been like, her name was Maria. Please, Doctor, please. I wonder where she was. She was in America. Oh, yeah. And she was trying to ring Luke. Oh, yeah. Maybe that's who she was on the phone to. And then Luke tried to get run over. Yeah, we'll talk about that in a sec. So just back on that scene of uh, Tennant having his rage. For me, I, I think... So back on this point, people were saying they feel a bit uncomfortable about him having a go at Wilf. Yeah, he's he's I, I think Wolf understands and I think he's getting his emotion out and I think he is going too far and he is being really arrogant. And it's like that time Lord Victorious thing again coming out. But I think it just goes to show that, yes, it is time for him to change this. This incarnation has come to a point now where he needs to let go. Yeah, he is thinking too much like a god. Exactly. Yeah. And that's and I think he realises it. 
he he's comes, got a hero complex. Yes, yeah, he comes to the he he says about about oh you're you're just not remotely important, and he gets all that out, and then he he sort of sighs and shudders to himself, and he says, "Live too long," because he said that earlier in the episode. Sometimes I think a time lord lives too long, mm. and that's him realizing, oh, I've I have gone too far. I need it. I need a bit of a reset. Yeah, and oh my god, Matt Smith is weird. Who wrote his dialogue? Stephen Moffat. I kind of, it could either go two ways for me. Mm. I could either really love it or really find it really grating. Yeah, I will just say. I've got ears, I've got legs. He, he's flexible. Oh, he kissed his leg, yeah. I wonder what else he could kiss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will just say, remember, when the Doctor regenerates, their head is frazzled and they're not in their right mind for a bit. Yeah, because he said, who am I? Yeah. So do you remember when David Tennant first appeared? Yeah. He was, so he was all right in the immediate moment. He was like Barcelona and all that. But then there was that little mini children in need scene. Yeah. And he was going a bit crazy. He was going like, you know, all over the place and he was making the TARDIS crash and everything. Like the dog tends to go a bit loony when he's regenerated. Um, Anyhow, can we talk about this farewell fucking tour, please? Okay. Are we at that point yet? Okay, we can. But just before that, just before that, again, when I first watched this, you know when he goes into the glass box and absorbs all the radiation and then he goes to crouch to the floor and you see his hand on his head. Yeah. I thought he was going to stand up and be Matt Smith. Yes, so did I. I was like, oh my God, his hair looks different. His hair looks different, yeah. I thought that. And I was like, that would be a a really cool way of doing it. It would be. It would be really cool. This, but the thing is though, the Doctor doesn't like simple and... Demure. <laughs> See how I regenerated without the flame? Very demure, very mindful. <laughs> I don't need to destroy the TARDIS with my <laughs> with my flaming hands. My God, you're going to be like <laughs> quickly making yeah. that as, as soon as you can so you can put it in. So before algorithm. it's no longer relevant. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so if you saw this before, before the book that this went live, you know why now. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, he doesn't do the things very like. Yeah, he likes to put on a show, but he put a show yeah. on for himself. And the TARDIS got destroyed. Yeah, so I think when they made the parting of the ways and Christopher Eccleston regenerated, they made him burst into flames like that because he'd absorbed the time vortex, and that was the time vortex like destroying his body, mm. and he regenerated in that. I don't think that was intended to be okay. This is the new standard regeneration effect, but they liked it so much. Then when the master regenerated in Utopia, they kept the same effect. Yeah. And it's just become the standard now. Yeah. I wonder when the master comes back, if it would be John Sim. Maybe he doesn't come back. He does. Stephen, you can't have the longest reigning villain of and TV and yeah. not come back. Well, you'll have to wait definitely, and see on that which, one. Definitely. Oh, my God. I saw a video about Jinx Monsoon the other day. Mm. And apparently she did this scene backwards. What? She did a scene backwards. For what? Doctor Who. Oh, is it with the violin? Yes. Yeah, it's because um, the violin needed to come in like a cartoon, like just came into her hand. So she... The thing is, though, she said it backwards. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, that's cool. That's cool. So they taught her how to say it backwards. Yeah. I thought that was interesting. That makes sense. I mean, it's not a long scene. It would have just been one shot. Yeah. The thing but, is, yeah. though, um, you've got to make sure that it sounds right when you put it back into... When you do it right. No, I'm sure they would have dubbed her saying it the right way over the top. It's just the lip shape is, is, is the right way around. Oh. Otherwise, it would sound really weird. It would sound like, yeah, when you. What is. Jaguar. I'll reverse it. When Sounds I like Jaguar. <laughs> I'll reverse it and see what it is. Um, anywho, so this farewell tour. Oh my God. The doctor's reward. He's off to get his reward. But the thing is, though, the doctor. The doctor just looks at people and they know that he's dying. I don't get that. Is he psychic now suddenly? Like he looked at Sarah Jane and Luke and Luke was like, they were like, and she was like. Yeah. Oh. It says, it, I remember seeing this in the script. She didn't look well there. Did she not? She looked a bit. No, she did actually. Gaunt. Bless her. Yeah. Um, Bless her no, heart. It said in the script, um, he looks at Sarah Jane and Sarah Jane looks at him and she just knows. She's seen it too, too much, two times before. She's seen it once before. Uh, but not the glowiness. No, it was a simple crossfade back in those days. <laughs> oh, boring. Um, so yeah. Martha and her new husband, Mickey, 
It's awful, isn't it? You were furious when you saw that. I'm I don't blame you. Absolutely livid. I'm like, there's absolutely no, no reason. need. I'm sorry. How does Martha know by looking at the doctor from 10 miles away? Well, we don't know that they. And that... then she hugs Mike. Yeah. I'm like, he shouldn't have married me then. And I yeah. bet Martha, I bet when Freema Adjaman, I bet she went and read that. Oh my God, I've married Mickey. Blah. Yeah, I can't understand it. It makes absolutely no sense. It does. Like, when did Mickey get a job in Turboland? What? The tur- the the people who run around like headless chickens. Unit? That's the one. Well, I don't think he did. She was in Unit and then he persuaded her to go freelance with him. But... What a waste of a character. I know. And why pair them off? They've got nothing in common. And she was really high up in Unit. Yeah. Probably getting a very good salary. It was such a weird choice. And what was a random Sontaran doing on Earth? Yeah, who knows? Well, you never know. There was what, there was a Sarah, Sarah Jane episode with a Sontaran. There could have been one doing something. But yeah, it's just such a random choice. I wonder if they're double-barrelled on there, Smith-Jones. Is his name Mickey Smith? Mickey Smith, yeah. You know that. You knew that. My God. But yeah. Like, what, what, what would they have in common? I guess... Aliens they... and their adventure with the Doctor. Yeah. Mickey lost his love, Rose, to the Doctor... And Martha loved the Doctor and got rebutted. Yeah. So they both kind of had their heart broken by the Doctor in a way. Yeah. But, yeah, it's very weird. So, yeah, as you said, then Luke and Sarah Jane, and he saves Luke from getting run over. Do you know why he put that in? Because he actually saved him? No, because in Sarah Jane Adventures, obviously when they're filming on the Bannon Road road that they use, they close the road. So there's never any traffic. Yeah. So when they're filming, the kids never look before they cross the road because they don't have to. Um, and Russell was like, that's a really bad message to be putting in a kid's program. And they're not looking before they cross the road. So yeah. you put in this thing as like a reference to that and then have him be safe and be run over. Well, yeah. And then um, and then he went to Jack and Alonzo. Yeah. So this. Big... Where was Alonzo? Where, Where was he? I thought he died. No, he was one of the ones that survived. Um. I wonder what he's doing now, though, because, I mean, the Titanic's gone. I thought he was going to join Torchwood. And he was still dressed in that, like, nautical outfit, wasn't he? Yeah, well, he does that to catch the boys. Yeah. And so he's gay then, or he's at least interested in men. He could be bisexual. Yeah. And so I like this scene because if you think about Jack and Children of Earth and what he did, which was pretty much, you know, you might think unforgivable and mm. Jack hasn't forgiven himself. Mm. He's gone off to find himself. I think the Doctor knows what he did and what he had to do. And I think the Doctor giving him that note saying his name is Alonzo and giving him the little salute, I think it was just his way of saying, it's okay. We all make mistakes. Yeah. And I like that allows Jack to move on. Yeah. Or we all have tough decisions to make. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, lucky, um, lucky Jack. Yeah. And let's move on. Okay. Does Donna get a winning ticket? There's someone before that. Oh. Verity Newman. Who? Jessica Hines. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I love that one. They nearly cut it. You probably think they should have cut it. It's all right. I I love it. It's probably one of my favourite ones because she's so good when she's signing to the Doctor and then she realises and she looks up at him and he's like, was she happy in the end? Yes. Yes, she was. And then he's just like, and were you? And he just doesn't answer. Just gives this sad smile. Yeah, because he fell in love with her when he was human. Yeah. And I love the fact that he still... Thinks of her. Has a special place in his heart for her. Mm. And it's a very clever way of doing it. Mm. So the the name Verity Newman is a reference to the creators of the show. Um, Sidney Newman and Verity Lambert. Okay. You don't care. Can we move on to the lottery ticket? Okay, Donna, Wolf and Sylvia. Does she win a lottery ticket? Well, that's implied, isn't it? That's the implication. Yeah. So when we see her again... She's going to be rich. Life, she should be rich. Wait and see. And she should be still with... Sean. Sean. And they have a daughter played by Yasmin Finney. Yes. Sue 3 comes out next month. Heartstopper. Mm. Yeah. So, do you know, uh, that that breaks me. When he says, I never carry money, so I just popped back in time and borrowed a quid off a really lovely chap called Jeffrey Noble. That was her dad, who obviously was had died. Yeah. Um, and it's like, have that, have that on me, he said. That breaks me. And Sylvia's like so taken by that. And then, yeah, it's a lottery ticket. And Donna's like, a lottery ticket? How cheap? <laughs> she doesn't know. 
that it could be a winning ticket. Or well, probably is. Is it a winning ticket, well, Stephen? I've seen the same episode as you. I think you have to assume that, yes, that's the idea. That because he set her up. He, he set her up because he, he couldn't do much for her because he couldn't give her the... He couldn't give her the spiritual wealth of knowing her adventures, but he could give her the physical wealth um, to at least make sure she doesn't have to worry. Yeah. You know, because they were scraping by a little bit. Although, as you said, they could afford a church wedding, so... Yeah. <laughs> obviously weren't doing that bad. They're not that... They're quite expensive church weddings. Mm. But yeah. And there's a little there's a little thing in there, thinking about the woman, the mysterious woman, when Wilf asks him, you never explained who was that woman. He doesn't answer, but he looks at Sylvia and then he looks at Donna in the distance. And it's like he's saying mother's mother and daughter. Like, mm-hmm. So you probably is his mother. And then my favourite one that you, you looked really bemused about. And I was silently shaking with tears rolling down my face because yeah. it's my favourite one. Rose and Jackie. Yeah, he couldn't even he couldn't go and see the real Rose who knows all about him. Yeah. Could she? But I'm sorry, wouldn't Rose realise in the... When attack, he regenerates. Wouldn't she, when he regenerates, uh, she'd be like, oh, I saw you. Yeah, and... exactly. But he was in the shadows mm. and she was probably drunk and you wouldn't remember a chance encounter like that. Mm. I just think it's so, it's such a clever way of doing it because he can't go through the gap in the universe. There is no gap anymore. He can't go and see the Rose that knows him. And he wasn't even going to speak to her. He was just standing there in the shadows and he was going to watch her just so he could say goodbye for himself. Yeah. And then he couldn't help uh, making a little oh, groan noise. He must have diarrhoea, I think. Yeah. He was like, oh, oh my God, I'm going to shit myself. Imagine that's how, imagine if that's how um, people regeneration works. Like you just shout out. The new person. <laughs> the person. <laughs> and then they grow out of slime. Um, oh my God. Don't think that that's a good story idea. Thank is you. Is it? Yeah, is it? It is. It's cool. Um, yeah, but I just as remember, this is the this is the wrap up to everything for me. This was the end of my childhood. When this aired, I was a few months off turning eighteen. David Tennant had been the Doctor throughout the whole of my teen years, and this is why I attach such significance to this story because I I know I agree. I will admit, looking back on it, it's not the best. Mm-hmm. It is quite weak, but I will always love it because it it's the wrap up of my childhood. Literally. And that's I probably it's probably why it makes me cry to this day. And that bit when he says to her, what year is this? And she's like, January the 1st, 2005. And it's right back to before the beginning. And he says, oh, you're going to have a really great year. Mm. It just hits me because it's like you could go back and you could start rewatching that from series one. And yeah, you've got a whole treat ahead of you. Like, it's a lovely way to end it, I think. And she pulls it off really well. Remember when she came back in series four, she was a bit like weird Rose, like with funny teeth and Mm. she'd forgotten how to do it. This, she's totally believable as the Rose that we met in 2005. And Jackie, and it's just lovely. It's just lovely. Anyway, then we get the Ood appearing in the snow. And they're singing a really sad song called The Doctor Dies at Midnight. It's called Vale Decem. Called... The Doctor Dies at Midnight. Which is Latin. The Doctor Dies at Midnight. It's Latin for Farewell 10. The Doctor Dies at Midnight. Do you know which kind of singer it's sung by? An opera singer? Yeah, male or female. Um, is it done by a boy? A countertenor, so a male adult who is it sings Alan in James? falsetto. No, his name was... Oh my God, I used to know this and I've forgotten it. Squishy McGee? Uh, I'm I'm disappointed in myself that I've actually forgotten the name of the singer. I used to know it. Mark Chambers. He was like... And then the choir... Do you think people want to hear this? What happens if you did that vote and it was like 100% yes? It would never be. You don't know that. Yeah, you can't do it. That's no one, dude. <laughs> what was it? Farle Deche. Let me try again. Let me try again. Farle Deche. Farle Deche. Farle Deche. Farle Deche. Farle 
Do you think people want to hear this? Anyway, um, and then the whole choir come in, and I always think this is, it sounds really silly and fanciful, but he says the universe will sing you to your sleep, and it's like the universe is coming in singing, but also it's us, it's all the viewers and all the fans that saying goodbye to David Tennant, mm. singing along to him. It's, Did he yeah. regenerate on Christmas? New Year's Day. And yeah, Matt Smith, we touched on, you said um, you found him a bit... I've got ears, I've got legs, I've got noses! Yeah. Yeah, let's be fair, though. You can see on Confidential, like... Um, he's nervous. He's very nervous. And the pressure of this. So what they did, they thought, OK, this is a big moment. We don't want loads of people in the studio crowding it and making him nervous. So we'll clear the studio, OK, and just have the essential people in there. Mm. So they cleared out the studio. Um, everyone went to wait outside. And then, of course, Matt Smith has to walk through this massive crowd of people to go and film his scene. So it was ridiculous. Yeah, I think he does. He does. He does an all right job. You just have to remember, as I said, that um, the doctor's a bit scrambled when they've just regenerated. So in the same way I said to you when David Tennant started, he's not like this all the time. Matt Smith is not like this all the time. Mm. Um, the thing that makes me laugh is when he's when he realizes he's crashing and he clings onto the TARDIS console and there's like debris falling and something that something falls and hits him in the face and he just goes ah as it hits him in the face. It always makes me laugh. And you said, what did you say? You think his new catchphrase is going to be Geronimo? Yeah. What does Geronimo mean? Um, I was looking this up the other day. Obviously, it's the name of a Native American, a famous Native American. Mm. But it also it was used as a um, an American military thing when they were testing like parachutes and things. People would jump out of a plane and they would shout Geronimo as they did it. And it just sort of caught on. So there we go. We're done with mm. David Tennant. How do you feel? Sad. Yeah. It is. It's a big deal when the doctor changes. So should we put this on our list then? We didn't do that last week. No, we forgot. We did it after the recording ended. So let's see. Let's see where we did put it. Part one, we put at, you put 33 and I put 32. So about halfway down the list. I would put this one at 34. Oh, you, you thought this was not as good as the part oh. one? No, I put I put that one down to thirty. The last one down to thirty four, and this one at thirty three. Okay, so part two is better, slightly better. Okay, now this is going to be really tricky for me because I can try and look at it objectively and think it's as we said fairly weak, but I think I'm going to have to I'm going to have to follow my heart and I'm going to have to move it up because as I said, it's so significant to me. It's a huge deal for me. Um, I think I'm putting it... I'm going to put it at number 10, which is just under Last of the Time Lords, the Series 3 finale, and The Runaway Bride. Mm. So there we go. Quite a big difference there, actually. Number 10 for me and 33 for you. Mm. So, time for Hottie of the Specials. So you're Hottie from this week and last week is the Master, is that right? Yes. I would tie him with Tenet because I do think he looks particularly good in this double parter. Yeah. But I do think, I don't know, I'll go with John Sims to have it most. Just one Sim. John Sim. Yeah. I think I might go out on a limb and actually say my hottie of this week was, he only appeared for like one second. He was the barman in um, with Captain Jack who gave him the note. I, like, I didn't oh, even notice hot. him. He said from the gentleman over there. He was quite hot. Stephen has candy eye lasers. I do. <laughs> he knows how to find a candy eye. I have a, a radar. Oh, yeah. So, okay, so you so going back through the specials then, you said you had Jackson Lake as your hottie yeah, of that one. he was good. He was hot. You had um, Barkley. Yeah. From Planet of the Dead. You had Yuri. Yeah. From Waters of Mars. And we've got the master in this one. So of those four... Who takes your hottie of the specials? John Sims. John Sim. Why do you keep saying Sims? It's one Sim. Sim. John Sim, and very closely follows by the person who played Yuri. Oh, okay. Um, mine were Jed, the balloon man. The blue man? The balloon man. Oh, yeah. Um, Nathan. Yeah. Roman. Yeah. And the barman. And my overall hottie of the series goes to Nathan from Planet of the Dead. He's a cutie. Who's Nathan? Nathan! Oh. He's cute. 
Um, I did a vote on Instagram. Do you want to know what the listener's choice result was? Same as you? No. He came, I think, quite close. Maybe a second place. Yuri? Nope. Who? Listener's choice was the master. John Sim. (laughs) Yay! They agree with me. For once. (laughs) It's just something about him. Yeah, I, I do, I do admit, I do see what you mean. He is, he is attractive. So there we go. Very good actor as well. He is, yeah. Like the way he, like he in this episode, he was like he's very good at coloring. Like he was tender, and then he was, I do it, you go it. Hmm. Yeah. I think he was well cast as the master. Like I don't think he would have been right for the Doctor because he's got that really steely core mm-hmm. i think he's better suited to the master than he would have been to the doctor was he up for the doctor i don't think so but yeah does anybody know who else was up for the master's role oh i don't know never thought about that june whitfield <laughs> imagine if it turned out at the end she was the master i'm gonna catch that bouquet she lost it out to um don't drag me. yeah <laughs> they had a little cat fight <laughs> oh get you bitch <laughs> Just imagine okay. Jerry Jackie yeah. saying that. Anywho, we have now got some lovely messages from you. Messages from you. Messages from you. Are you going to answer this phone call, Stephen? Messages from you. Hello. Hello. We have messages, Stephen. We do have messages. I have put on Instagram for people to tell me what they thought of End of Time, what they thought of the specials. Um, what they thought of the end of this era and our first one is from Finn Um, when asked what he thought about the specials he said honestly I think they're better than series two overall series two does have some better episodes than the next doctor and planet of the dead but I think the arc of the specials is so well done and gives the best ending for a doctor series two was a low point for you I don't don't know if you remember but there was a string of episodes in series two where every week it was just this is garbage. This is garbage. And I was like, this podcast needs to pick up because people are going to stop listening. <laughs> Luckily it did. But um, it, is, it was a tough, tough series to get through. It was absolutely tough. Um, so he's Finn saying that the specials are better than, than that. Um, Louisa messaged in and said the specials are so hit and miss. Next Doctor, meh. The Lady Christina one I hate. Waters of Mars is 10 out of 10, and the Christmas New Year special is a solid 7 out of 10 for me. I would agree. I would agree. Part one is probably 5 out of 10. Mm-hmm. And this one, the next part, 7 out of 10. Oh, okay. But the thing is, though, like 5 out of 10 is not bad. No, it's not bad. Um, Half marks. Yeah, but there have been better things. Like, I really like Waters of Mars. I didn't mind. I didn't, I didn't hate... The Christina one. No, I don't hate it. It's a bit of fun. It's a romp. I personally think there needed to be more arc in this. More, a bit like Children of Earth, where there's more, there's a there's a common threat throughout the, they should have laced in the Gallifreyan in people from the beginning of the specials. Mm. And then that wouldn't feel so like out of the blue. Yeah, maybe. Um, and it was wrapped up really quickly. Yes, it was. Yeah, I felt that actually watching it this time. Normally it feels like it stretches longer, but. It sort of was wrapped up quite quickly. Um, Ethan, who has been on the podcast, messaged to say, (laughs) end of time is probably the worst RTD one pair of episodes ever. Apart from the montage at the end, it just feels so self-indulgent and silly. It's just shit. (laughs) Then he says, sponsored by our last five pints of raspberry ripple cider at the pub. So yeah, alcohol played its part there. He also said... I agree with him. Yeah, he said, I honestly can't stand it. I just think it's when RTD really just threw in the towel and thought I can throw any old shit at the wall. Yeah, but the thing is, though, that's shame on him if, but shame on him for this, because this had potential to be such a good, good story, mm. but it needed to be stretched out and embellished and paced better. I can understand that, yeah. And the thing is, like like I said earlier, I, I completely understand that that view and that criticism. But um, you needed, I think, think what, I think what made this so poor is that the lack of a companion. Mm-hmm. It was basically the Doctor just being this, I'm a god. Yeah. That wasn't enough of mm. an arc. But and Wilf, you can't play with that arc. Wilf was the companion for the last two episodes. Mm, was he? Yeah. 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 Was he really? Yeah. Did he go in the TARDIS? Yeah. Oh, he did. Yeah, he did once. Yeah. 
We were in space, mate. Yeah. Oh, I've dreamed of a view like this. Oh. All right. I'm an astronaut. Okay. Next one is a voice note. Exciting. Comes from our listener, Thomas. Hi, Stephen and Ben. Just wanted to say I'm absolutely loving the podcast. It's a joy to listen to both of you every episode. Um, I'm really, really excited to hear both your reactions to the end of RTD1 era. It's my favourite era of the show for sure. I'm also very curious to see how Ben like deals with the change of show writer and um, Doctor. I think it'll be fine. You know, just because the change of Doctor is such a big deal for all of us. You know, I think it's always hard to let go. And yeah, I wanted to ask, because I'm currently going through the backlog of your um, episodes and I'm in season one, and sometimes, you know, it's normal, um, but I can tell that Ben doesn't like it sometimes. And I wanted to ask if there was like um, a switch on kind of thing, like when did he, what episode was it that he realised, oh, I really like this show actually. Um, Yeah, really looking forward to hearing your reactions also who was your favorite cameo from the end of the show thank you so much guys hope you enjoyed it thomas i think you've got me mixed up with someone else yeah oh that was a lovely message thomas but yeah the ben's face when you said when was the moment you realized you really liked the show he was like i don't think that moment's happened yet babes <laughs> no i like the show and i I like more episodes more than others like other PRs. Yeah. But I tolerate a lot of episodes. You tolerate a lot of yeah. But I will I from my perspective, it seems that you are generally enjoying it more than you yeah, were when we but started. I was really enjoying Tenant. Yeah. Because I really like Tenant. And Well you've got to give Matt Smith a chance. It was a privilege to watch him because he's such a good actor. Yeah, yeah. And it makes me want to see what else he's in. Yeah. Um he's in I think he's in like a Julie Cooper. He is, yeah. You said yeah. you said that the other day. Mm, um, I watched that. But yeah, get its kit off. Oh, okay. Um, personally, I think around series three uh, with Martha was when you you started to say, "Oh, oh I, I do like Martha." You said, "I remember you saying, oh, it seems like there's been a step up in quality. Like it feels like it's much better now." Mm. So I, I would say that's when it started for you. But yeah. um, and Thomas also wanted to know what our favorite cameo was from the end. Um, I've already said my favorite was Rose and Jackie. Donna, you like the Donna? I love Donna. Yeah. Donna's my favourite character of all time. Yeah. Um, plus Tenant's Doctor. Yeah. Oh, we didn't talk about Neris. Remember Neris? No. From the wedding episode? No. She was like her sworn... Her, she was like her best friend, but her sworn enemy. And she blamed Neris for her get ending up in the TARDIS when she didn't know what was going on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then she was like, you're like a peach. Furry skin sewn inside going off. Simon messaged in and just said that the specials were so hit and miss. Um, I wasn't a fan at the time, apart from Waters of Mars. But looking back, I really love all of them. Mark says it goes from silly fun to holy shit, this is getting serious. It goes to silly fun to, oh my God, let's throw pasta at the wall and see if it sticks. Yeah, let's throw shit at the wall. Yeah, um, or shit, shit smears. Yeah. Kieran said, iconic, sensational. Wish there was a whole series in 2009 that was companionless with David Tennant. Why, oh why, David, did you decide to leave behind four specials only? Well, we know the answer because he was busy with other things. But I disagree with you wholeheartedly. You don't think you'd have liked that? I don't like pan- companionless because companionless means that he gets a bit of a complex and he he yeah. his loneliness makes him do rash material. Yeah, I would agree. But that that is the point of it. We could have still had that over a series, the point of him doing rash things no but yeah Robbie on Twitter says aside from Waters of Mars they're nothing special definitely not as strong as season 4 and while David's acting is on fire in the glass box scene with Wilf and I buy Ten's emotion in that scene I feel deeply uncomfortable watching him rage at Wilf and not in the good this emotion is so raw that I feel uncomfortable kind of way rather I'm more uncomfortable that he's making Wilf feel terrible for forcing Ten to save him and it makes his insistence that it's an honour ring extremely hollow I know what you mean, Robbie, but as I, as I mentioned earlier, I think he realises he's gone too far and he checks himself. That's why he suddenly says, yeah. live too long. And then, then he, yeah. Yeah, and I think, I think the Doctor needs to realise that uh, you can regenerate. Exactly. Wilf can't. Wilf can't, yeah. Yeah, he is being selfish. And then and he realises he's being selfish. He just had to get it out. We all do that sometimes. We're allowed to have a rant and a moan. Yeah. Yeah. I would say he's human, but he's not. Robbie also just added on, um, end of time has elements that I like. Uh, Wilf and Ten together, especially. But turning everyone into the master is so goofy. The story's okay, but it feels like a lacklustre send-off for Ten when compared to the high of Series 4's finale. I agree. 
Series 4's finale was a great... Series 4 finale should be easy of a generator. Yeah, I can understand that viewpoint, definitely. Didn't need to be this drawn out process mm. of like oh my god he's always listening to like like he if he was if he was um at home he'd be that lady in uh, Catherine Tate every time he hears four knocks ah! <laughs> every time the postman knocks on the door <laughs> screaming dropping his tea yeah um and our final message is another voice note and it comes from our patron Caleb hello Stephen and Ben this is Caleb Patreon supporter here and I wanted to wish Ben the very best moving into the Matt Smith era. For me, personally, it was a very, very exciting time. It was a show that was not in need of a refresh, but it kind of gets one anyway. So very curious to see what you will make of it. And also, I just want to say that I appreciate this podcast a lot. It's the only podcast I have ever listened to religiously every episode. So thank you both for all of your dedication. I've been meaning to call in and haven't until now. So frankly, it's about time. <laughs> See what you did there. Thank you, Caleb. I love that. What? Where are you from in America? Yeah, it's a very cool accent, isn't it? Or is he Canadian? I don't actually. Yeah, we don't. We we don't know. Us Brits aren't very good at telling the difference sometimes. No. But yeah, Caleb wishes you well for the Matt Smith era. He said it's a very yeah. exciting time. I just don't think it's going to be good for me. Well, like I said before, you said that about David Tennant. You said I don't think I'm going to like him. He won't be as good as Christopher Eccleston. And remember, you like Moffat. You've liked every Moffat episode you've watched so far. Have I? Yeah. I don't Empty think so. Child. Yeah. You loved. Girl in the Fireplace, you really liked. That's low on my list. No, you, you, it was your favourite of series two for a while. Blink, you loved. Yeah. And Silence in the Library and Forest of the Dead. I didn't like Forest of the Dead. Yes, it's why, it, way up. It was your number one for a while. In that fact, one I think was it's the, the gloom. Li- Forest of the Dead, yeah, with River Song getting saved to the computer. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's still your number one. Oh. And you said you didn't like it. Well, no, I couldn't remember it. Well, there you go. I still think they should have called it the gloom, not the ash for blah, 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 blah. Memory like a sieve. What? I you, know I do. Yeah. I've got important things to remember, not... Not Doctor Who things. Not Doctor Who things. Yeah. So we are, I mean, for the last time in the RTD era, this is crazy, but it's time for... Patreon, 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 shout outs. Patreon, 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 shout outs. You know, since it's the last time, I'm going to have to try and do a tenant voice for the list. Yeah. But we have a new patron to welcome. Yeah. Today, I'm welcoming Ryan. So this is our second Ryan. We've got two Ryans now. Okay. So welcome, Ryan. Thank you so much for supporting us. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Ryan. You join the wonderful ranks of Louisa, Louisa. Philip, Northerly, Jason, Jason. Joe, Joe. Tom, Tom, Louis, Michael, Michael Ferner, Ferner, Heather, Heather Benny, 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 Caleb, Benny, Monica, Monica, Amber, Amber Jess, Jess, Kaylee, Kay, Kieran, Kieran, Jay, Jay, Jay Owen, Natalie, Natalie Imogen, 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 Sarah, Sarah Aaron, 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 Jake, Jake Matt, Matt, Ryan, Ryan, Ryan Janie, just Janie. Allons-y. Bye, Tennant. Goodbye to David Tennant's doctor. I'm sad, but I'm also really proud that we've made it this far. And I'm excited to start the new era. What is it called? The next episode. Is it called the Moffy era? It's called the Moffat era. Um, and the next episode is the 11th hour. Because he's the 11th Doctor. Okay. Yeah. This show is so twee. Yes, yeah, all right. Get over it. Anything you'd like to say to listeners? Thank you for listening to 81 episodes. If you've got this far, well done. Yes, indeed. We're not far of 100 now, so we're going to have to do something special for that, I think. Anywho, thank you, listeners. Your support means so much. Um, remember, you can email us at abouttimecast at gmail.com. You can follow us on social media, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. You can support us on Patreon or Coffee. But until next time... Stay cool, stay safe, stay fantastic! fantastic.